All right. Okay. Hello. This is the first of uh, I don't know how many I but uh, because I'm isolated and we're all having to stay in our homes because the world is got a plague. There's a new plague. Um, we I, I thought I would do I I used to do a lot more doodling before I was a stand-up comedian and before I uh, did uh, Bud Pod with Phil Wang, my podcast. I used to do lots of doodles and things. And so I thought I would record myself speaking in a kind of nice way. Not, I don't know if it fits with, um, <coughs> excuse me, AS, ASMR, but it's all like nice, you know, drawing noises. And I thought I would do some weird drawings. Um, normally they're really horrible, but I imagine YouTube has got rules about that, so we'll see. I haven't done my research, but... Um, yeah, that's it. And so uh, if you like it or you like the podcast or me or well no, if you like this, let's make this a this only thing. If you like this then then buy me a coffee. If you like what I do, then you can buy me a coffee and that would be nice. Otherwise, don't worry about it. Um so let's get going. What are we going to draw today? First we're going to sharpen the pencil. Ooh, no. <laughs> that's the worst. And the little guy pops out there. I'm sharpening into a weird little pudding pot thing. I think this pencil is so broken. Let's find out. Is that a good phrase? Sometimes you have to sharpen to the bottom of a whole pencil to find out whether it's ruined. Uh, that's ruined. <laughs> this is a good start. And... Yeah, we've got a nice a little... Dwarf pencil there. The Tyrion Lannister of pencils. I'm sharpening into a little... A, 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 what's it called? A ramekin? Is that what it's called? A pudding pot. A little pudding pot. <laughs> um, and pudding pot is, of course, my gang name. So, you know, watch out. Let's see. This is all still recording. That looks good. I'm a real noob at this. I feel old. Uh, what are we going to draw? Let's draw... Let's sketch something out. Um, let's draw... Someone... Something weird. I, I don't know if you guys used to do this, but I used to just draw... Uh, when I was bored in class, but I used to try and draw things that would make the person next to me laugh. Let's do a sort of big face. Um, yeah, let's do this. I, uh, I'm self-quarantining because I'm pretty sure I've had the corona. The rona, I'm pretty sure I've had it. Um, because apparently, I'm in week two, I've lost all sense of taste and smell, so I can't even smell the lovely pencil shavings. Isn't that a shame? Um, and I've had a sort of snotty nose, so I'm going to draw this guy. He's going to be trying to squeeze his own nose into freedom, into cleanliness. Where's his other arm? Let's make it there. And his nose is going to be all... Um, all horribly... Squeezed, like stress lines. Maybe that would be better for the nostril. Um, he's gonna be angry about it. Angry eyebrows. And let's give him a what they call a widow's peak of hair. So that would be the general shape of the hair. Big, like a George W. Bush ear, big crazy ear. So this is going to be him squeezing his schnoz. Is schnoz Yiddish? Oh, Dad always used to say schnoz. Well, still does. Um, let's make his nose come out here. That's quite obscene. We will alter that. 
to make it even more obscene. That's the real fun. I'll make it all the horrible stress lines from being so squeezed. There we go. It's got to go in, doesn't it, before it can go out. Always remember that, children. It has to go in before it can go out. And so he's really... He's really got a... grip on it here. Let's make a horrible... He's kind of like a weird, horrible elf. And maybe he is. Who are we to say whether or not he is a weird, horrible elf? Um, to be honest, I, rather than maybe having had Corona I would, and having everything's been cancelled, that's the other thing. All the shows, I was supposed to be in Melbourne but now. Sorry to anyone in Australia who would have liked to see me in Melbourne. Um, let's give him a big belly. It's quite nice. And his t-shirt can be riding up on it or his shirt or whatever it is, and his belly's sticking out there. That's how I look now, after staying indoors. Like a little belly boy, like a pudding pot belly boy. Um, and what, is his, what are his legs doing in this scenario? Um, let's say that he's trying to He's really, he's got very nice big trousers. Where would this be going? I suppose it's up here, perspective wise, isn't it? Yeah, and then down here we have the lovely Elf Crutch. <laughs> Elf Crutch um, was one of the greatest jazz musicians of all time. If you uh, ask your uh, ask your jazzy grandpa about Alf Crutch, and he'll tell you all about his amazing nose trumpet rhythms. Put the other thing here. Um, this is looking all right, actually. I mean, it's you know it's ridiculous and pathetic, but um, what would be what would he be saying? He'd be saying, let's have him saying something like, uh, something like, get out. Um, so that's, well, that's something, isn't it? <laughs> um, uh, right, okay, so let's move on to the next stage, which is to make this all inky and weird. Let's do that. So this is... Uh, Indian ink, um, black drawing ink. Ooh, that's fun. And um, make sure we're still recording. Yeah, for good or for ill, we're still recording. And that, oh, that's not good. Ooh. Yes, you can tell it's been a while. The ink is trying not to be even available to me. Yes. Um, in America, I believe it is called India ink instead of Indian ink, and I don't know why, and I don't know if it's out of date or weird to call it India ink or Indian ink, but it was called that when I was at school. So I'm just gonna be all, I'm gonna be all weird and old about it. I like nib pens, but they don't like me. I break them a lot. I'm a real oaf. Uh, right, let's see. I'll try not to smudge any of this. Um, watch out if you're going to use Indian ink for anything because it is incredible stuff. It will not leave your clothes. It will do its best not to leave your skin. It's a real swine. Now let's see if this even works. Now, this is a very rapid stage to be doing this on, but why not? Okay, I'll start with a big eyebrow. Hey, it's drawing! It's the least you could ask for, really, isn't it? Boink, get some water in there. Let's do this horrible schnoz. 
And it's here. Look at those stress lines coming up. Here we go. And don't worry about it. It's messy, but that's fine. We're just having a nice, um, a nice time. I've kind of forgot the, about the existence of thumbs here. But there's the ghost of a thumb. I'll put that there. And there's his other... Make it better, that's his nostrils there. He's really going for it. He really wants whatever is out there, whatever is in there, to be out there. And, and why wouldn't you? It doesn't look like a lot of fun. Whatever's happened to this revolting elf doesn't look like a lot of fun. Um, I don't really know how to draw strain lines on the fist. But that's okay, we'll just imply it. That's alright, we'll do a horrible motion jigglies. Uh, I think he deserves more evil eyebrows than that. Okay. Um, right. Let's see. Let's do this. Sort of collar here, whatever is going on. With his clothes. Make some creases. Make a nice elbow fold. It's nice to be free with this kind of thing, not to get too worried about whether it's even any good. <laughs> he said, reassuring himself. Uh, this was blocking out that. Uh, no, it was blocking out all of it, wasn't it? Oh, bugger. Oh well, well let's draw across it. Lovely belly is with a lovely um, belly button. I don't know if this paper is supposed to have something as rigorous as Indian ink applied to it, but well, there's only one way to find out, isn't there? I might end up having to make his lovely pants black just to compensate for all these errors. Wouldn't that be fun? Like a, like a fascist in a P.G. Woodhouse novel, which is a niche reference, but this is the internet, so I'm allowed to make references that in a comedy club never, ever work, which is a shame, because P.G. Woodhouse is very good and fun and interesting and all the rest of the other words that you're supposed to say about someone who's way, way beyond establishing its reputation for already being good. A little shoelace there. Um, if you don't know, the, uh, he invented these kind of parodies of Nazis, parodies of Oswald Mosley's black shirts called the black shorts. And these guys went around wearing little black shorts and being fascists. Let's make this a horrible jaw here. Let's try and get all the creases we can. This guy's absolutely is at the end of his tether. It's a really creased eye with our big eye bags. He's straining this guy. What's in there? What's in that schnoz? He wants it out, and you know what? So do we. I'll make his cheek big and red later. That would be nice. Fast, not for him. These frown lines. And let's do this big weird ear slightly further out than before. There we go. Some weird completely made. Oh, the ear should come out here as well, shouldn't it? Yes. Hello. Hello, Mr. Ear. Horrible jowls. There we are, yep. 
What does this guy do for a living? It's not, um... Doesn't look like he works in a customer-facing role, does it? Um, looks like he is... It looks like he guards a treasure, but not a good one. Like, the treasure this guy guards is like, um... Uh, in London, when you, you would buy bus tickets, or sometimes if you buy a travel card, you can, if you look at the back of the public transport sort of travel card thing, there's a voucher for McDonald's, and it's like, oh, you can get a Big Mac for two pounds instead of whatever a Big Mac is supposed to cost. And that's the treasure this guy's guarding. Now this is fun, when the big ink just blobs out completely. And you get to draw from the stain. There we go. Let's get messy. Yes, yes, like this. Let's make it a whole problem for ourselves. Now sometimes you can get bits of fluff at the end of the, the pen. You've got to sort of pick those out. Which is dangerous. And if you touch anything, you get these police fingerprints on. A bit of water. Let's try and salvage some dignity for this poor man. Doesn't turn out to be much of an accurate widow's peak either, but that's fine. This is all about enjoying ourselves. I was one of those kids who would get so angry that the art I was drawing did not represent what was in my mind. I was furious about my inability to manifest my inner vision, whatever that means. But it drove me nuts. It made me feel insane. Um, hmm. What are we going to do about this? We could disguise it by making his... Top stripey, maybe? Could have a stripey top. It could have to be like those, uh... <laughs> Remember in old cartoons when they would do patterns like on Scooby-Doo? And the pattern wouldn't quite... It would be like the pattern had been superimposed through the image, not on it. Um... It wasn't, um... It wasn't like the pattern moved with the fabric. It was like the fabric was a window onto the pattern and moved around it like a lens or a window would. And so that's what we're doing here a little bit, we're cheating. There we go, he's got a stripy jumper. Um, and checkered pants! There we go. Now normally you wouldn't draw the checks in with such strong lines, you would do it just through the colour that we're going to add in a bit. But, um, well, you know what, anything goes today. <laughs> On plague day. That's what it, that's how I'm commemorating the fact that uh, coronavirus is terrifying and shutting down the world and all stand up in my career is I am getting a little fruity with the old pattern work in my doodles. That's the sort of thing I do when the world's ending. To be honest, I'd probably be drinking more beer, but I am still, I still feel ill from having maybe the coronavirus. And I can't taste anything anyway. It was classic week two corona, apparently. So if I had a delicious beer, what would I even taste? Nothing. I would taste nothing at all. It would just be fizzy water. Um, having no sense of taste or smell does mean, however, that you really accept what it is about tea and coffee you actually like. And you realize when you only really drink coffee for the effect of caffeine. Let's make this a bit darker here. And let's do some shading. The color will do a lot of shading, but it can be fun to do some cross-hatching. And we can mix it up. We're allowed to. I'm gonna be a horrible Bob Ross. <laughs> That's my new dream. I was gonna be a stand-up comedian, but all that comedy has been cancelled until the plague is over. So let's see. 
Uh, we can shade this a little. Just a tad. If any of you would like to pay me extra for commissions or if you have any suggestions on what to draw, get in touch through all the different forms of social media that I am obliged to have, which are now something of a lifeline. Imagine doing this coronavirus thing without the internet, my word. <laughs> it would be poopy. It would be very poopy. I'm going to shade these little leggies. There we go. Um, are we going to shade his belly? I suppose we must. Sometimes in life, there are things that you have to do. And on this occasion, we find ourselves having to shade in the belly of some kind of furious elf. And this also needs a bit of shade because it's under the t-shirt. We wouldn't want to waste that lovely effect we've made. Mm, something's gone wrong here visually. Sometimes when you're drawing you can see that you've done something that has made a problem. You can't always immediately tell what that is. Also, I should really be shading here, no, from here down, so I never touch it with the heel of my hand. I'm not doing that. Because anything goes these days. Well, with the plague. I'll stop referencing the plague soon, I swear. As soon as I get it out of my head, both literally and figuratively. Let's shade this in. Um, how much more shading do we need? I suppose we could shade in. As long as we remember which lines are shading and which lines are not here with the old crotch. Um, well, he's very anatomically unusual, this guy, but I like him. I like him and I, wanted, I would subscribe to his magazine or newsletter. Um, which is the main thing, isn't it? Oh, this is a big blob of ink that we forgot about. Now let's do some cool letters. Just riffing a font. It's the kind of insane thing that happens when you're in quarantine with Piano Valley. He'll just riff a font without even asking. Look at that. Serif, not serif. What the hell's going on? This guy's disgusting. That's what all the graphic designers are saying. All none of them who would watch this. There we go. It's not exactly a freehand Michelangelo circle, is it? But it's pretty good. There we go. And more little teeth for no reason, for my own amusement. And let's let's make this T similar to the top T. Uh huh. Uh huh. And a little circle there. Um, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. Let's see, has it recorded? Yes! Well, that's just charming, isn't it? Um, sorry about that. That was my calendar reminding me of an event for which there is no point, because all the events have been cancelled due to the plague. We know, Pierre, the plague. Right, let's... <sighs> well, see, now we kind of have to let that dry, don't we? Hmm... All right, let's let that dry. We'll wash this pen. It's also it's e it's even quite difficult to clean off clean off glass. This thing, this stuff, it really is wicked. I'm gonna be bad and use my t-shirt because it's black. What a pig I am! What a terrible, awful swine! There we go. That'll do it. No one will tell. If anything, it'll make the black part of my shirt look even more convincing. Um, right. 
now we just have to let that dry. Um, what should we do while we do that? Can we do anything? Can we even remove it from a sketchbook? Um, Alright, I'll pause this while it dries and then we'll come back when it's time to, uh, to colour it in. Um, okay, so it has dried, we are back, and uh, to be honest, I made myself a coffee while I was drying. That's not what I want to be honest about. What I want to be honest about is the fact that I used a hairdryer, because I'm very impatient. Um, you can use a hairdryer to dry your Indian ink, it's quite good. It saves time. Uh, but if you have any like blobs of liquid, it can fly them around and move the blob, which you can use to make cool effects as well, but um, it might destroy your GCSE coursework. Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. Bit of the old corona coming out there. Now it's time, that's the nice thing about Indian ink, is it dries so thick we can rub out the pencil. You don't have to rub out the pencil, and it can be quite cool to leave the pencil lines in. However, if you're going to use watercolours on this like we are today, then the pencil can smudge, the watercolour can make it look dirty. And there's nothing worse than dirty watercolour. That's what I've always said. Um, I don't like it anyway. Again, it's something you can use as an effect, I suppose, once you're aware of it. I'm trying to do this gently so it doesn't wreck everything. Because the last thing any of us want to do is wreck everything. That's not the sort of thing we like here in these nice videos. Okay. Quickly rub them with this glass of water and we'll quickly rub the elf's crotch there for good luck. There we are. That's probably good luck in some in some parts of society. Uh, maybe the D&D &D part. I've only played a little bit of D&D. &D. Um, but I'm sure there's some part of D and D where it's good luck to give a stressed out elf a quick rub on the crotch while he squeezes his nose and yells, yells at his own nose of all things. Um, let's see then. It's really hard to always get all the pencil. There's always pencil lurking. You have to accept that kind of risk with this kind of adrenaline pumping. You know, it's between this and skydiving and free climbing. This makes people the most afraid. Although, to be fair, stand-up comedy makes people absolutely cack it. Public speaking and all that. Which, um, I suppose I understand, but it's a lot easier than you think. You just have to stop caring about whether or not you look absolutely awful. Which is easier said than done. Um, right, let's put the lid on our ink so it doesn't dry out even more than I have irresponsibly let it do over the years. Over the years, now we get the lovely watercolour. Watercolour colours. And now it's already, it has kind of gone through to the other side on this paper, so it's not high quality paper, so let's separate it out. There we go. Doesn't matter if it gets through on this. Right, let's put you over here, and let's get ourselves a nice little brush. You want one that kind of tapers to a point, and probably costs more than 3p, unlike this one. Maybe I have a different one. I really do just have a big old bin of kind of half good, quarter good art material. So do forgive the low quality and obscene bristles of any of this. <coughs> right, let's see. Time for some coffee. Okay. 
No. <laughs> I was about to say... <laughs> I was about to say, if you're following along at home, can you imagine if uh, people just sit and draw a horrible elf squeezing his own nose and shouting, get out, as if it's like, uh, here's how to draw a dog. And everyone's going, oh, that's a classic drawing everyone has on their walls of motels. It's the elf with the nose. Yeah, yeah. Seinfeld did a routine about it. Uh, but if you are following along at home, then when you are coloring it, you must use the light colors first with watercolors, because once the dark colors are on, you can't change them. And uh, you may wish you could, if you're like me and you like to fiddle. Okay, so we need to give him a general face color. So let's try and just do a general, kind of slightly orangey. Yeah, there we go, that sort of thing. Now with paper this low quality, make sure you try and use thicker paper with this stuff, but with this paper this low quality, it will dry really quickly. And um, you will not be given any sort of attempts, any sort of attempts to blend and so on, will not be tolerated. So, and you won't be able to use lots of water because it will just completely bugger the whole paper. So beware, you have been warned, okay, that this is not the way to do it. This is just an initial test run. In future videos, I will use a um, nice heavyweight acid paper and other luxurious things, like the paper you see just underneath this paper that we're using as a kind of filter almost. Right, that's kind of, that's the sort of thing we want. It looks a bit Yes Minister, doesn't it, at the moment? Like the, God, you're full of modern references today, Pierre. P.G. Woodhouse, Yes Minister. Did you have a lot of friends growing up? Um, that's nice shading on the old belly there. That's ended up quite nice. I'm pleased with that. Um, in the intro to Yes Minister, which you should watch now that you all have quarantine time to watch things on YouTube. I'm sure it's on YouTube or I don't know, buy it online. I don't know what your lives are. Uh, the intro is all sort of full of caricatures and things, and it's either Gerald Scarf or Ralph Steadman. I'm pretty sure it's Gerald Scarf because he was a cartoonist for the Times. And still is sometimes, so he's very old now, I think. If you're watching this, Gerald, I love you and I would love to meet you now, uh, once it's safe for you to meet people at all. Uh, so, and it's all sort of live caricatures and things, it's sort of, sort of uh, corridors of power. There we go, that's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that guy. Now then, now then, now then, now then. I get a bit of yellow in here. Get a little bit of yellow. Make sure you can see, yep, pretty much. Um, not to make him look too jaundiced, but... There should be a bit of yellow in everyone's skin. Bit of yellow, bit of red. I'm just cheating a bit with the orange, to be honest. The orange doesn't give quite enough warmth. It's going to be darker around the mouth. So that's shadows and lips, shadows and lips, around the old mouth here. And in the bits that are being strained, of course. Around the ears. Make that nice and... Uh, what kind of hair should he have? Let's give him dark brown hair. As opposed to black or grey or anything. Just for the sake of adding in the colour. I uh, love it. Doesn't run. These colors don't run! Because they're Indian ink. I'm pretty sure that's what that phrase is about. It's an, I think it's an Iron Maiden song as well, these colors don't run. I, re I remember reading a Daily Mash article once about how people who liked Iron Maiden were like the most sincere people ever. And how everyone else can make fun of them, but at the end of the day, 
the Iron Maiden fans are the ones really, really enjoying themselves. And that's always stuck in my head as being really true. I think I probably enjoyed myself more when I was young and I was more open about the nerdy things I liked. Although a lot of nerdy things now are trendy, which would have pleased and maddened my younger self. Now we're just painting the dark colours along with the lines here, just to add some texture. Um, there we go, get some of the jowl in. Mix it up. We're being messy today. Today is a messy day. There we go. I don't know why I've been so shy about colouring that bit in. It's funny when you're doing this, you'll realise that you've missed some bits out for reasons that don't, they don't well, they can't really be explained. You just your mind has failed to prioritise them, and there's no real explanation for it. Now we need to warm up this belly. Um, there we go. It's a bit plain up here. Let's make sure it's rich, rich brown. I think I went to university with someone called Rich Brown. Or am I just remembering yet another one of the greatest jazz musicians of the 20th century? It's a question I'm always asking myself. Right. Now then, we've done some interesting colours here with the yellow. Let's fill in some of these whiter spots. Sometimes you want to fill everything in, but sometimes it gives it a bit of texture. And it's important to know when to stop fiddling, Pierre. It should be, second fist should be in shadow, because it's in the background, and... We'll leave the teeth sparkly white. There we go. Yes. That's nice. So, now it's time for some red. Now the red on some of these watercolour things is a bit more towards the blue side of the spectrum than the orange. Um, so watch out for that. That's very bright. I may come to regret the sheer level of brightness on this red. I do want it to be like this. I do want it to be like this, he said, uncertainly, as he possibly ruined the drawing for everyone. Nice big red cheeks. Let's make the ears red too. You can see it's sort of more cr crimson than than red. So we're going to add a whole load of orange to this to make it fiery. There you go, that's the kind of deep reds you want to see. Let's try and get some lighter. Let's see how much we can blend this. There we go. If I was smart, I would have taken a piece of wax and I would have put some wax on here to make it a shine, like a big shiny schnoz. Um, but, you know, we must be reasonable here. Because the wax protects it from the liquid and then you can remove it and it's a perfectly white bit that is left underneath. And you look super clever and everyone stands up and claps and you get to ride on an elephant. At least that's how I'm choosing to remember art class. Let's see. That's nice. That's nice. Anyway, I'm pleased with that. I was very worried there for a second. I don't want to upload a video of me cacking my own pants when it comes to this kind of thing. Although that would probably get more hits than this will if it was like a top 100 man quietly drawing to himself fails. <laughs> um, we need some more shadow on this, on these eyes of his. These are dark, shadowy, horrible eyes that we want to em emphasize. Um, yes. 
Oh, that needs to be red as well, doesn't it? Get some orange, get some red on this nostril. A crucial part of the schnoz. A crucial part of the schnoz. Now, I remember an old art teacher of mine, Mrs. Gulland. She taught me that when in doubt, natural light is blue. So you should always try and have a bit of blue shading going on because that is how light appears as it's filtered by the sky, like outdoor light. So you always put some, give them some blue bags here. There we go. Ah, see? She was smart, Miss Gulland. Probably still is smart, I'm sure she's still out there. Uh, yeah, that's a nice shadow. A little bit of shadow here under the schnoz. Yeah, that's nice. I like it a lot. And this bit here. And let's do the sort of makes it look a bit like he needs to shave, which is probably true, isn't it? He's probably forgotten to shave for a bit. And that's a bit too blue. So we'll dilute that a little. Um, and do... um, that's pretty fun. It's I've kind of screwed it up a little bit, but that's okay. Nothing wrong with screwing things up just enough that you learn for next time. Try and make sure that drawing stays fun for all of us. Especially if I'm going to do more of this kind of thing. There we go. This is in the background, so it should be more blue. Every now and then I'm doing this with my little finger just to get a bit of excess off it, because once you've added too much, then it's too much forever, basically. On this quality paper, anyway. And you could always paint over it with acrylic or something, or you could get really fiddly with it. But you know what? You've just got to accept your mistakes sometimes. You've just got to put your hands up and say, you know what? I screwed the pooch on this one. And I'm sorry. Okay, yes. Yes. Um, that's quite nice. Um, what color should the text be? I think it should be a color that we aren't going to use anywhere else. Let's make it green, lime green. I don't think I'm going to use lime green anywhere else. So, let's do that. Mm -mm -mm. Now, normally I'd be more careful, but this is pretty good freehand. This is years of, of art at school and also trying to paint Warhammer. I never got to play the game Warhammer. I didn't have anyone to play. Well, I had people who were sort of interested in the pictures and the figures and the stories, but to be honest, learning the rules and the dice and that, you know, it all just seemed like a big faff. Let's do some action lines. He's really yelling. Is he yelling or is it coming out of his soul? <gasps> what? Okay. Um, now the stripes. What kind of stripes are we dealing with here? What kind of guy is this? Um, let's say... Let's save the stripes. Let's do the shoes. I'm gonna make them like nice brown shoes. Mr. Brown Shoes, for anyone who thinks in Simpsons quotes as well. That is what Mr. Burns calls uh, Lenny, I believe. Lenny or Carl, in an attempt to display the fact that he does know his employees' names. Uh, but he doesn't, because he says Mr. Brown Shoes instead of his name. Ha ha. Right. Now I'm doing something that I would be in a bit in trouble for at school, which is just colouring in to kind of get the job done as opposed to being particularly careful with it. 
So forgive me, <laughs> forgive me. Okay. Now the checks. Now this, this is the, this is going to be difficult. How do we do tartan? How does one do tartan? Um, oh, because if we do the light colours first, then we'll have to do loads of little squares of green. Are we up for that? Let's say we're up for that. Let's do the red first then. We'll do a big red pants wash on his big red pants. That's nice. What a jolly colour of pant. When I moved to the UK from South Africa as a kid, we were like Americans and we said pants instead of trousers. We didn't realize that in the UK, pants means underwear. And my older sister had to rapidly explain herself at the age of 11 or 12 in her school, her new school changing room where she said to someone else that they had nice pants. And they were terrified that this strange African girl was complimenting their underwear. Um, but these are some nice tartan trues, some trousers. Donald wears your trousers. Well, that, that elf is wearing them. That's where they are. That's where my trousers are new. What color socks? Let's give him dark green socks. Oh, that's not coming through at all. Um. Dark green socks. That would be nice. That would be nice, said the grown man. Um, <laughs> right. Oh, he's really suffering there. got to wait for this to dry before we get any more clever with it. Um, now the stripes, the thorny question of the stripes. <sighs> what is it going to be? What is it going to be? Mm -mm -mm. If only this, if this was live, we could all vote on the stripes. All none of us. <laughs> yellow. We don't have any big yellows here. And that would, visually, that would be quite nice. I'll leave yellow broadly out of the tartan to keep it balanced. <clears throat> Excuse me. There we go. Now you've got to really thicken the watercolour up if you want a big, bold first blob of the stuff. We'll do it here. That's good, yeah. Okay. There we go. That's a nice first big yellow stripe. Um, try and alternate it a bit here. Mm -hmm. There's always these little patches, little dots of moisture left over, and you can sometimes be quite strategic with them, but sometimes they do just get in the way and it's the it's the price you pay for having a brush that's wet and ready okay there we go that's nice a nice big yellow stripe here Goes with yellow. Um, it's a lot darker here than on the other zones, but that's okay. This man doesn't look like his life has been marked by consistency in any way. There we go. It's got a nice bit of shade to it. Um. We can use some of our leftover yellow powers to do a bit more of a wash on this belly of ours. Um, it needs a bit more shadow, if you ask me. Mix it up with the orange, some dark brown. There we go, that's better. And in the belly button, nice. That's what we like. A nice shadowy belly. I see the paper starting to disintegrate there. That's a shame. That is a shame, as they say. Maybe we'll leave the stripes white. Or slightly off-white. Yeah, we'll do that for now. 
And then that means the shadow here has to just be a very general, I don't know, very general, like dark brown. Is this a good idea? Yeah, that's gone pretty well. Certainly hasn't ruined it, I'd like to think. Bit of shadows there. Bit of shadows. A bit of shadows. Okay. That's nice. That's a nice shadow. We've done well there. Well done us. Well done all of us, actually. Including you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that. Got a bit of shadow here as well. Okay, now we're at the tartan bit, which is a real, a real faffaroonie. Um, we're nearly done though, which is good. Okay, let's get a really dark green. That's what we're gonna do. Really dark green. And we're going to do the insides of the squares, I think, to just make it look a bit tartany. Okay, now this is this kind of laboriousness in 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 aid of authenticity is the sort of thing that normally you really want to avoid. But um, sometimes you have no choice. And I think this is one of those times. I've just seen that my phone, which I'm using to record this, also says 20% battery left. So <laughs> there's a real element of speed to this now. And you don't want the video to be too long, or people will just think that you are a serial killer. There we go. Being a little rough and ready here, but that's okay. I think people will get the impression of tartan. You can be impressionistic to save time, which is a really, it's a really authentic artistic excuse to not draw everything in properly. You can say, no miss, I was being impressionistic. And, you go, oh, and then again, you get to ride the elephant for being so good at the art. There we go. The green doesn't look too bad on top of the pink, you know? Like in terms of it holding its color. I mean, it's a much more dominant color than the pink, especially the way I've done it. But, um, still, we'd be wrong to be disappointed. I'll say one thing for it, we'd be wrong to be disappointed. All right, let's try over here. Speed is of the essence, gentlemen, and ladies, and anyone else. This is for everyone, whether they like it or not. <laughs> I wonder if art's bad enough and you say this is for everyone, it counts as like a threat. And you say, how dare you? At least limit your bad art to one particular targeted group, please. We could have done without having to look at your elf squeezing the Christmas out of his own nose and shouting, get out. Maybe this is a Christmas elf. This is off-season for them. This is what their lives look like the rest of the year. They're trying to get all the Christmas glitter. That's what it is. His nose is full of Christmas glitter. And it's a real shame. Because it's June, or whenever. What is it now? March? The seasons won't matter when we're all confined because of the plague. Oh, he's mentioned the plague again. And it's a shame, because we were so close to collectively forgetting. Probably not. Probably only watching this because quarantine has driven you insane with boredom. And is this a solution to that boredom? Mm, it's up for debate. It's up for debate. Um, it's a shame, really. All the recordings of... of any sort of podcast, including the one I do, will have to be, like, over the phone, I suppose. I mean, the last one we did was over the phone, so maybe that's not so bad. If 
Oh, what a faff for everyone. For all involved. And by all involved, I mean humanity and the West. Now, this should be dark, because it's the shadows here. So we should complement that by making sure the green is dark. Probably won't even necessarily see the shadows there coming through. There we go. That's not too bad, is it? For uh, someone on what you might call a time budget. Now, because green is the main colour, we can use it to do these shadows, actually. And to run around the outlines and things, just to give the image a bit of consistency that it might otherwise lack. Um, okay, and yeah, still going. Good, good, good. Now then, he said as he tried to remember what other colors come with tartan. We need a stronger red. There's often an absolutely blistering red in tartan. And we'll alternate it with a blue. So let's do one of these channels. Really red. That's nice, and we'll alternate. There we go. That's nice, I'm happy with that. I am happy with that. Do it this way here, one here. Alternating. This is my tribute to Neil Buchanan of Art Attack. Shout out to my other art teacher, Mr. Kelly, who looked just like the head from Art Attack, as no one ever stopped reminding him. And shout out to my other art teacher, Miss Thorpe, who I saw when I was doing tour support for Frank Skinner, actually. She came to one of the shows with her partner, and we had a chat in the interval, and it was really nice. Very nice. Mm-hmm. There we go. Alright, let's do this guy. And then alternate. Alternate and alternate. Nice. Happy days. Okay, now we get to alternate with dark blue. Really dark. Let's really get this guy. Okay, yep. Right. Quick leap here. Here we are, um, and hopefully you have been hearing all of this. I've only just done this setup, so there we go. That's nice, Christmassy looking. Well, we is this the elf's family tartan? Perhaps, perhaps it is. Perhaps he's a Scottish elf, and this is his off-season gig, posing for cartoons. By roasters, absolute wee roasters like me. <laughs> My gran taught me to draw partially, and she was from the Orkney Islands. So she probably drew up, grew up drawing, I don't know, seagulls. Certainly no trees. Did you know that? There are no trees on the Orkney Islands. It is too windy for trees to grow. Shout out to any of my distant Orcadian, Hebridean relatives, if you're listening. There we go. And there are a few of them. And I have a distant cousin who runs a B&B &B on Iona. <laughs> you know, we've all got connections, guys, in showbiz, yeah. Now we're going to use the blue as a dominant but not visually dominant outline thing because that ties it together because we've overspilled the boundary a few times haven't we and we'll use that to create some some nice shadow oh that's not thick enough come on Pierre take the time to do it properly or don't do it at all boy right nice 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 shadow there. That's good. Uh -huh. Look at a 
Miss Tartan pants. I'm pleased with that. I am pleased with that, and I'm very rarely pleased with anything. I'm going to do some detailing with the blue on here. It's nice, give a suggestion of a bit more than we've given him. I've made the belly button a bit too dark there. Let's quickly try and fix that a bit. There we are. Very light blue shade here. That needs a bit more orange now, actually. A bit more warmth. Nice! Oh, that's pretty good for a first drawing from old pudding pots. Uh, right, that's the first one done, guys. Um, if you like it, then subscribe to the channel and send people my way. I'm going to see how many of these I can do while I'm literally trapped in my flat. Um, so, yeah, I hope you like this elf telling a load of Christmas glitter to get out of his nose. Uh, like and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and subscribe to my channel, all the usual nonsense. And, um, yeah, buy me a coffee if you like. I've got a buy me a coffee link in my profile somewhere, and I'll put it in the, in the description. And you can send me the price of a cup of joe. Okay, thank you. Bye.